Good evening, I'm Christy Walker along with Dan Gephardt and we're here for the, tonight's matchup against the IPFW Lady Dons and Kentucky State. And we don't have a lot of background on Kentucky other than they're one and one so far in GLVC and we're two and oh. And they are one and eight overall in the season. We're eight and six. So it ought to be an interesting game. Christy, that's, I think it's going to be a real interesting game. I don't think uh, historically Kentucky State has not had a very good program. They, uh, as you mentioned, they're one and eight. That one win came over Kentucky Wesleyan, which is a big win for them in the conference. Uh, we don't know much about them. Coach Sheehan doesn't know much about them. And actually, we don't know how we're going to play tonight. We had two major injuries on Tuesday night in our, in our win against Ashland. And I'm sure she's looking to fill that spot. The, the one's a, a season engine injury, injury to uh, Joy Thayer. And the other one is April Bear, a middle blocker, who's going to be out for probably two to three weeks. So coach is looking for something right now. Well, we'll have to see what they do on the floor. I talked to uh, Coach Sheehan a little bit before the game. She said she's real happy with this year's team. They are playing quicker. They lost their height, so they're playing a lot better on the floor. And everyone that's come in so far to substitute has come in and filled their role. So they ought to be able to do the job against um, Kentucky State tonight. She's got a real young ball club, and I think she's got to be real pleased with the way they've gelled at this point in the season. Usually when you bring that many freshmen into a starting lineup and only have two returning lettermen, it takes a while to get together, and she's really put this group together. It'll be inter interesting to see how they react to the injuries because I think that's going to be a key right now. Danielle Berlin, a transfer student from Ohio State, brought a lot of experience in, but she didn't join the team until late. So she's really made a big difference, and we hope that they can carry that through. Well, even though they had um, those injuries, they came off a win with Ashland, so right. that ought to get them up and ready to go for tonight. Right. And we're going to send it back to you now. We'll be right back with you with the starting lineups. This is the increasingly competitive world we live in, and this is the country we want ahead of the competition. These are the people we'll be depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. These are the colleges and universities we're relying on for the people we're depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. So if you want America to stay number one in the world, do something about it. Give to the college of your choice. As an athlete, it's especially painful to watch cocaine destroy those around me. How could these heroes, with so much strength and discipline, fall for cocaine? They thought they could control it. That's the big lie. No one controls cocaine. So don't blame them. Learn from them. If you're using cocaine, get help. Call 1-800-662-HELP. You were the first in this family to uh, get into college. I'm so proud of you. I can't go, can I? I just can't afford to send you. I didn't mean to let you down. I understand. Maybe next year. Maybe. Hard-working students deserve a chance. Please, support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. There's something spreading in the third world. No one's immune to it. It passes from a mother to her children, from a man to his neighbor, and before long, it affects an entire village. It's called knowledge. Care. We're helping people learn to live without us. Head coach is Bruce Sam. And welcome back. We just had hey the starting now, lineups IPFW for Kentucky IPFW State, IPFW. but we're going to go ahead and throw it down to the floor for IPFW's starting lineups, and then we will uh, update you on Kentucky State. 
number two, Julie Huber. At middle hitter, a 5'10 sophomore from McAllen, Texas, number eight, Amy Povado. At outside hitter, a 5'8 freshman from Woodburn, Indiana, number 10, Shannon Smith. At setter, a 5'6 junior from Noblesville, Indiana, number 11, Jill Lyon. At right side hitter, a 5'9 freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 12, Heather Teagarden. And at middle hitter, a 5'9 sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 13, Danielle Berlin. Head coach of the Volley Dons is Cheeks. And now would you please rise and join in singing as we play our national anthem. And we'll update you real quick since we missed the Kentucky State lineup. Number one, Tiffany Burnsworth. Number two, Wednesday Furman. Number 11, Deidre Logan. Number 17, Donita Reese. And number 18, Teresa Hall are the starting six for the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. So we'll be uh, a very short amount of time here till we find out what's going to happen in tonight's game. As we mentioned uh, in our opening, Christy, we really don't know what to expect from Kentucky State. Their record does not uh, appear to be a very strong record. They have a couple of kids from the Muncie area, which, which virtually has some very strong uh, junior volleyball programs. So I don't know if they've uh, come up to this area to recruit or if there's some tie with, uh, with the family members and, uh, and the Muncie area or what. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how our kids react to a pretty much unknown team to start out with. Well, the one good thing about it is that we are a young team, and a lot of times a young team will play as hard against any team rather than a, a senior and a team that maybe knew what Kentucky State had last year might try to plan and play them the way they played the year before, whereas this team being so new, other than Jill Lyon and Julie Huber, they're going to have to just play them, and, and sometimes that works out the best being a young team. I think that's a, I think that's a real important point. I think that uh, the kids, most of the kids on the floor, are Shannon oh, Smith, yes, Heather Teagarden, Danielle Berlin, and Amy Palvato, uh, really don't know much about Kentucky State's program overall. So you're right, it's, it's kind of they're going into it with uh, not having any experience nor knowing the history of the program. So Good serve by Kentucky State. Killed by Shannon Smith there. And the interesting thing I thought, and this is going to be interesting to follow, is she had Dan, uh, she being Coach Sheehan, had uh, Danielle Berlin passing the ball the other night. Uh, Shannon Smith came in for Joy Thayer, who typically passes the ball and did the passing. So I don't know whether that was just the, the spot in the rotation or whether that would be the case all night long. And Shannon Smith, and there was a, a net violation by IPFW, so it'll be side out to Kentucky State. We're having a real hard time reading their numbers here. We'll catch up as who serves as their yellow numbers on white in the front. That was number two, Wednesday Furman. And there's Julie Huber. And you'll find her significantly at the net all night long. She's been hitting the ball very well. She's had a lot of shoulder problems, but she's really been hitting the ball uh, uh, well lately. And it's going to be real important for Kentucky State to pass the ball well and be able to run their offense. And that first series, they didn't do a very good job. Now, it looks like they've got a couple kids who are able to put the ball down, so that may, uh, may be a factor here. Yeah, that was Wednesday Furman. And that was an interesting point. Uh, Sheehan, before the game, also told me that 
uh, the girls have to expect the ball from Kentucky State. It could be on the second, it could be on the first one, or, or the third. They may not set up a play, and the ball's going to come, and they got to be ready to play it. And uh, obviously right there they were, as Heather Teagarden kills, puts yeah, that one down. That was a nice back set by uh, Jill Lyon. And Jill's been playing very well, making some very good decisions on the setting. And uh, that, that obviously, the other night, at one point in the Ashland game, there were uh, four players who had eight or more kills, and that's a, a, a great way to distribute the ball. There, Jill went up for a matchup there, and uh, there was no call, and that's going to be off of uh, off of Jill out of bounds. Jill has done a very nice job at the net also. I don't know if she's gotten stronger over the summer, but often in the past couple years, she's lost that uh, jump-type ball at the net, and this year she's been the stronger of the... Uh, of the two offensive players and been able to uh, get the ball down. Back to serve is Donita Reese for Kentucky State. And that's going to be an ace service for her. We did get a hand on the ball, but uh, not enough to uh, get it back into playing position and out of bounds. And that gives them a point. And that's the first point of this game. One to, one to nothing, the Thoroughbreds lead. And Reese serves again. Nice set to Lyon, and there's a kill for Danielle Berlin. That's a great backslide. We talked about that a lot in our broadcast on Tuesday night. But that's a very popular attack in the women's game, and Danielle Berlin runs that to perfection with Joe Lyon, and I think we'll see an awful lot of that backslide tonight. Huber serving. And it's got to go over and into the net with Heather Teagarden. And that's been another thing Cheeks has been pretty proud of this team is that if they make a mistake, the seniors haven't come down on it hard. They just kind of tell them that's okay. Let's just get it together and see what you can do next time. This is what you did wrong. Let's try to correct it. And, uh, and that's a real important attitude to have on a team. You've got to be able to have some team building and uh, some camaraderie. And as you said, they don't come down on each other. They just they work a little bit harder to make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's a a real important factor. And the line judge called that last one in, so it's a two to nothing lead. Thoroughbreds and IPFW starts off on the backside. And that's hit outside by Shannon Smith. And it's interesting point that IPFW has won the first game of their last five. And uh, starting out behind three to zero right now tonight, they've got to uh, wake up and uh, get ready to play here. Well, actually the last two, Kentucky State servers have done a very nice job of serving the ball, and IPFW is not getting a very good set. On that last one that Shannon Smith hit wide, it was not a very good set. She just was trying to hit it off the block, and the block wasn't there, and it went out of bounds. Danielle Ber Berlin with a uh, long serve, I should say, not wide. I think the adrenaline's flowing right now. I think it's going to take them a while just to get in their rhythm. They've got two new players in the starting lineup, and that makes a big difference, too, to come out in the first game. And that was wide as well. So IPFW gets side out. See if we can do something here with this. And uh, we have a veteran back at the back and see if Jill Lyon can get something rolling for the Dons. Nice quick move by Amy Palvado on the front line. And that's long. And so IPFW does get a start on the board, three to one. Early in the first game. Well, and Kentucky State ran into the same problem IPFW had. It wasn't a great set, so the, 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 the uh, hitter was trying to just hit it off the block, and the block wasn't there. Same thing there, a free ball for IPFW, a chance for a second point. And that's going to be a little wide, and there was no touch. Yes, so. there was. Oh, I'm sorry, they didn't call touch. I thought the uh, lines person called the touch, but the uh, official overruled it. Yeah, that's, I, I looked up, I saw the official's hand, and I guess you saw the lines person, and... Uh, so Shannon Smith there with a wide, a wide hit. And a service there there by number 18, Teresa Hall. Shannon Smith back to serve for IPFW. Shannon's a redshirt freshman, played great the other night in coming off the bench uh, after the injury to Joy Thayer. And it appears that she's going to be the replacement, and she's got to come in and uh, do a lot of passing and be a strong hitter from the front row because that's what uh, Joy was doing for us. Amy Pavato's face said it all in that last one. I don't think she was ready for that to come down right in front of her. So it was side out to the thoroughbreds. And there she made it back up on that nice little tap. 
Christy, we talked about the the, uh, the immaturity factor of this team. And uh, actually, with Danielle Berlin and Amy Palvado both having experience as, uh, at Division One institutions, there is a little bit more experience than would uh, first look out there on the court. Plus, uh, Shannon Smith's a redshirt freshman. So the only true freshman out there right now is Heather Teagard. And we just had a substitution for IPFW. Number seven, Carol Lamar came in for Amy Pavato. Well, I think Coach Sheen will look for the back row defense as much as she can out of uh, Carol Lamar or, or, or another substitution if she has to and bring Amy out. Uh. A long serve, IPFW chooses to play it. That was a great back set by Jill Lyon. She came all the way across the court to set the ball the opposite way. The official said it was outside the antenna, though, so it's a point to uh, Kentucky State. And that's a 4-1 to lead. Burnsworth serving. And there was a service there, so it's a side out to uh, the Lady Dons. Heather Teagarden back to serve, a local player. Comes from Fort Wayne Snyder. Outside set, sent right back over. And that's long. Again, right now, IPFW is struggling with the first pass. Uh, Jill Lyons having to go too far to set the ball and is not able to make very good sets or have many options to go from. And uh, IPFW is not being able to take advantage of those uh, situations. Out outside of Julie Huber. Nice drive down the line there on, on the Kentucky Thoroughbreds. Still four to one. Huber back to serve for the Dons. Another experienced player that has played quite a few games trying to get something going. Free ball for IPFW. Line with the set. T Garden. This time it's Doug. Nice effort there by Carol Lamar, she just quite couldn't get to it, and that earns a side out for the Lady Thoroughbreds. Christy, it looks to me like there's an awful lot of indecision between Julie Huber and Shannon Smith, and I think that comes from the fact they haven't played a lot together. Uh, Julie very used to playing with Joy Thayer, and uh, it's gonna take them some time to get used to each other. So. Deidre Logan with a nice serve, Lyon finally got a nice uh, set there, and there's a good block by Jill Lyon and Danielle Berlin. And Jill's got to do that. She, they're going to attack her because of her size of the net. That's uh, logical. When she's in the front row, they're going to attack her. And she's got to be strong and be able to go up with a good timing to get that block. We haven't seen a whole bunch out of Danielle Berlin tonight yet. We need to get some middle attack. We need to get some blocking from her up front when she's there. They're probably going to try to avoid her. But Jill Lyon sets it outside to Shannon Smith. And that one's in. And there's a point for IPFW. 4-2. So slowly, the, you can t see the team just slowly starting to work together now, and uh, the points are coming back to them. Nice serve by Berlin. Set cross court. Once again, Shannon Smith. She drilled that one down the center this time. Well, and, we, and as we mentioned, that's what Joy Thayer did, and, and Shannon's got to step in and do the same thing. She's got to pass, and she's got to hit. And uh, that's twice in a row now. She's really hit the ball hard and put it down. Berlin still serving the ball for three, a chance for IPFW to finally tie, tie this one up other than the beginning of the game when it was zero to zero. And IPFW with the free chance here. And Jill Lyon, they're gonna call her into the net though. Good play on Jill's part though. She didn't have much of a choice. The ball was going over the net. She could have tried to save it, but they might've called the carry, so she just uh, tapped the ball over. Nice serve and a nice tap by Amy Pavato. She saw the opening there in the middle and uh, took, the, took a good opportunity just to tap that one over the top. Well, and I think Shannon Smith looked to me like much more aggressive on the pass there. She stepped in front to take the pass and she's got to do that. Lions outside to Smith. This time she was dug. And there's a little bit of sloppy play. Some people didn't know where they were going on Kentucky State, and that showed as it went into the net. And 
We've got a point. It's four to four. We got a timeout from Kentucky State, and I'm sure right now uh, they jumped out to a four to four to zero lead. They uh, thought they had their game under control, and obviously IPFW finally got it together. Now it seems like the floor has just shifted as far as uh, playing together. The, the momentum in volleyball is amazing, Christy, as you've seen enough games that that makes a big difference. And right now he's trying to stop the momentum of IPFW, and uh, they've got to just do the basics. They got to go back to passing, setting, and hitting. The College Cable Access Program Guide provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecasts. To receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide, send your name, address, and zip code to College Cable Access Center at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805-1499, or call us at 481-6582. And and this guide is real interesting. If you want to know what's going on, it's, a, it's something nice to have, and you can uh, keep up with uh, Channel 6. Well, and as you mentioned, it includes all the IPFW sporting events that will be broadcast, so it's a, it's a great resource piece, and all you've got to do is, is call for that to get put on their mailing list. Lions. And Lions going to continue serving for IPFW. And that was good, right on the corner, service ace. A lot of indecision on Kentucky State right now, and, and you don't want to take a timeout, Christy, and, and uh, not get the ball back. One, you either score a point if you're serving, or you got to get a side out. That's so important in this game, and they didn't accomplish that. Julie Huber, Lions outside to Smith. And they call it in, point, IPFW, IPFW with the first lead of. And the key to that is Shannon Smith, that's four in a row, kills for her from the left-hand side. Back set, nice dig by Huber. And that one's off. Point Fort Wayne, and it is 7-4. IPFW finally really moving well and uh, passing the ball well. Well, and even and even though Kentucky State lost the point there, they had a great back row attack. Now they did, didn't do very well in that pass and service ace by lines, but uh, that's what Kentucky State has to do. They have to settle themselves down and do the things that are basic here. The Lions showing a little bit of experience on the serving. And Kentucky State, there's one of those options that Coach warned him about. The ball's going to come over right away. And it worked to the, it did work to their advantage this time as IPFW was able to maintain and go at, now they're leading 9-4. to four. Well, and, and again, the key is Joe Lyon, the setter, is, is realizing that they're not stopping Shannon Smith on the right uh, outside and to just keep feeding her the ball. That's five kills in a row. And there's a wide service. And so Kentucky State earns a side out, and Teresa Hall will be back to serve. And we'll see what IPFW can do to get the ball back. That was kind of a quick set there by Lions, Jamie Pavato, but it worked out. Well, again, Kentucky State had reacted to the outside, and nobody was in the middle. She went to the middle, and nobody was there to block Amy Pavato. No, it was an interesting finger there, shake by uh, Jill to Pavato, trying to give her a little bit of warning that it may come there if there's not someone to the outside. And uh, they got it. It worked out for them. So. Chance for IPFW to score outside of Huber. She's blocked. Nice save by Jill Lyon. And that one didn't work. Pavato got a little bit of a hand on it, tried not to carry it, and uh, kind of went into the net instead of over. So a side out for the Thoroughbreds. Wednesday Furman with the serve. Great back row attack by Danielle Berlin. Great step by Jill Lyon. Really haven't seen much of that from Danielle, but it worked real well. There was nobody in the middle again, and uh, she just took the middle shot. Another substitution, Carol Lamar is coming back into the ball game for Amy Pavato. And we'll see what Carol has back on the serve. Thoroughbreds with the nice 
kill there. Christy, I thought that uh, the up official Dan Brandt could have called a uh, double hit there on the setter, but chose not to. So, uh, so they th thoroughbreds get the side out. Yeah, Danetta Reese gets uh, a kill for that one then. Julia Huber standing outside the line that time. She would have been a serve out of bounds. Christy, you know how tough it is when you're down there on the floor trying to decide if the ball's going to be in or long or short or whatever. It's just a, a split moment decision, and uh, it's what makes this game so tough. I'd rather be up here, I think, than down there on the floor. There's Lamar, gets it back over. Nice light tap, chance for Pavato, and there's a kill. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Daniel Berlin. I caught the side of her wrong. Oh, that was just a great play. She was just went over the block. She was just way up in the air that time, just hit over the block. Another tea garden serving for IPFW. And that's going to be wide. And IPFW goes up 11 to 4 in game number one. I tell you what, Kentucky State, I was just wondering, he's going to call another timeout. I tell you, it was 0 to 4, and IPFW came back, tied it up. Kentucky State decided that they would uh, call a timeout at that point, trying to get their team together, and they have gone nowhere. It's, now it's 11 4 IPFW. I think he decided he's going to try to pull them off one more time, if nothing else, to shake up IPFW or try to get them out of their rhythm because they are in a rhythm right now that uh, is really hurting Kentucky State. Well, you're allowed two timeouts a game. He's used both of those, and uh, if he continues to fall behind, he'll use a substitution. He'll do whatever it takes to stop the momentum. We talked a little bit about that. Momentum is such a key factor in a volleyball game, and it can swing so quickly one way or the other. And so as a coach, you do whatever you can. You stop play, and, and it's real important after a timeout or after a key substitution, again, either get the ball back on a side out or, or score a point if you're serving. And uh, so it'll be key to watch here what Kentucky State does after this timeout. So we'll see what it does also to Tea Garden as she's back still serving for the Lady Dons. And Heather with a good serve. Kentucky State ends up tapping it, but Berlin was there and now she's gonna try to drop it back over and it worked for her as Donetta Reese just wasn't ready for that. I think she was expecting it to come down hard and it really went up for the block and then saw the tap and thought she could try to play it. And that's that making up your mind on a split second. And obviously if you don't make it up right, it's, it's gonna not work for you. So, and there's another point, 13-4, IPFW leads in game one. And obviously Heather Teagarden was not shaken at all by the timeout and here is one of your uh, pointers the substitution to try to slow the game down they are out of timeouts number 19 Lori Riddle comes into the game for Teresa Hall well and coach Colin Leiter is calling the uh, serving patterns for IPFW and he changed uh, changed it up on Kentucky State Heather had been serving short and balloon type and uh, went to the, uh, the deep uh, fast serve and it caught Kentucky State off guard she gets a second ace in a row there yeah Wednesday Furman was totally unprepared. Looks over her coaches. He gave her a little bit of advice, I think, after that last one. And Tea Garden serving for the win for game number one. And she got it as number 17, Donetta Reese, wasn't able to even get under the ball at all. And we end up wrapping up this first one, 15 4. So for Kentucky State, they started out good, came out like they were ready to play, got up to four, and then and then their, their game pr practically just fell apart. Well, and, and they got here late, Christy. You know, they, they walked in the gym for a 7.30 match about 10 after 7. And, and sometimes that can work to your advantage because it doesn't give you a lot of time to, uh, to get all caught up in the emotion of the game. They came out strong. But I think as time went on, we saw that IPFW is, is a much better volleyball team than Kentucky State and really should win this in three and should win it fairly easily. Maybe an opportunity for Coach Sheehan to play some of the players who don't get to play a lot. Um, as we mentioned earlier, she's had a lot of injuries. She's, uh, she's got... Uh, Joy Thayer, who's out for the season with a knee injury. She's got April Bear sitting on the bench, who's, who will be out for two to three weeks. She is uh, redshirting a freshman, Kathy Cook, with a broken hand. She's uh, redshirting another freshman, or planning on redshirting another freshman, Andrea Woodcock, but uh, depending on how the injuries go, she may have to change that, that decision. Um, so some key subs have had to come in. I think they did a very nice job there. I think Amy Pavato did a nice job at the net. I thought uh, Shannon Smith came in and did an outstanding job. She passed the ball well. She hit the ball well. And uh, 
IPFW and Coach Sheen have got to look for players to come in and do that. When you look to go down your bench, you've got to expect them to come in and produce immediately, and I think that they, they were able to do that. Yeah, I would definitely say this bench has produced well today coming in, and it, it just really showed in the end of the, the game score there, 15-4. And like we said earlier, IPFW has won game one in each of its last five matches, so they continue that for tonight. It'll be game six, and they've actually won seven of their last eight. So they've started off on the right track, and we'll see if they can't finish it up in three for us tonight. She and probably doesn't have much to say to him. She's pulled Huber off to the side a little bit uh, to give her maybe a pointer or two. But uh, overall, the team's playing well now, and she's going to let them play. Well, Christy, we'll be right back for more volleyball action right after these brief messages. Good afternoon, Mr. President. It's a lovely day here in Georgia. Good morning, Mr. President. It's a nice day here in California. California? I could swear we were right next to each other. With a communications satellite, we can be. That's one way space technology impacts on life here on television, Earth. Television, telephone, and radio signals bounced off satellites bring people together who are thousands of miles apart. They bring us world events as they're happening. They help us educate, entertain, and inform. But communication satellites are only one of the thousands of practical applications of space technology. In the months ahead, you'll be hearing about remarkable advances in the diagnosis and treatment of heart disease and cancer. New ways to generate electricity and control pollution. All of them spin-offs of space technology. That's why Jimmy Carter from Georgia and Gerald Ford from California agree. Space technology has down-to-earth benefits for everyone. When Jenny was a baby, her parents noticed that she was not responding to noises. Her parents were referred to an audiologist at the local speech and hearing center. Currently, Jenny is seen regularly by the audiologist for follow-up testing, and she attends speech-language therapy. Early identification of hearing loss is critical to developing good speech and language. For further information, contact the speech-language hearing professional in your area or contact Indiana Speech-Language Hearing Association. And welcome back as we get ready to start game two of hopefully a three-match series tonight here against Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. And if the IPFW plays the way they did during game one, it should be that way. We will obviously find out very shortly as the officials check out the people who are supposed to be in the game and make sure the right people are there. Christy, I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to just remind folks that the uh, Athletic Center has change its name to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center and on October the 11th at 3.30 in the afternoon we're going to be uh, actually unveiling the and the official naming of the facility and we'd like to invite all the folks uh, from the forming community out to uh, participate in that event. There'll be a very short ceremony and there'll be tours of the facility and cake and punch uh, in the Athletic Center to honor Hilliard. So any of you folks that are out there listening, please come out and join us on October the 11th at 3.30 here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. Not only is it a great chance for people to uh, meet Hilliard and, and what an honor it is to have something named after you while you're still around, but to see the sports center and to see what IPFW is growing and to see how well the teams are playing here. And IPFW off with a good start outside. And that's off the block. Shannon Smith will get a kill on that one. Nobody is able to stop her out there. I don't know whether uh, Kentucky State's going to have to change his blocking scheme or what, but right now she's been able to either put the ball down or hit it off the block every single time. Well, she has a lot of power when she goes up, and unless they get up there and set, they're not going to stop it tonight. And there's a back set, number 12, Heather Teagarden. Gets it put down, number seven, for the thoroughbreds. Diana Workman got her hand under it, but it just wasn't enough. Lions still serving, and there's a nice block by A. Amy Pavato, and IPFW goes up 3-0 here real quick in the second game. Amy had great timing that time, and she penetrated the net with her hands, and so the ball went straight down on the kill attempt. That time she got her hands on it. It wasn't enough, and Shannon Smith ended up down on the hardwood. It'll be side out for the thoroughbreds, and we'll see if Kentucky State got anything uh, discussed during that short break and to see what they're going to try to do to get some points on the board. Well, that was a great back row attack by uh, Danita Reese there. She just, uh, she looks like she's got some great power from the back row. I'm surprised they haven't gone to her more often. 
In the middle, Shannon Smith, a little bit too much power that time as it went out. Well, actually, Shannon uh, appears to be able technically to be much more sound coming off the left-hand side than she does uh, coming from the middle. But you gotta you got to mix things up to uh, confuse the other team. Point, Kentucky State, Pavato with the nice drop. Kentucky State well aware of what was going on that time. And a quick set to Pavato as I think Kentucky State thought it was going to go to the outside to Shannon Smith, and uh, they weren't quite prepared for that. Well, Amy didn't get a lot of power on that ball, but, but again, as you said, they weren't ready for the attack in the middle, and she was able to get the ball down. Shannon Smith with the serve. There's a good power hit by number 17, Danita Reese, but that was a little long. Not enough topspin on that ball. The ball just took off. She needs to get her hand on top of the ball and get some topspin to, to bring that ball down in the court. Shannon Smith still serving 4-1. IPFW leads. Outside to Reese. Reese hits it wide, and it's a point, 5-1 IPFW lead. Shannon Smith continuing to serve for the Lady Dons. And she sends it to the back row. And they did call it ace on that one. I wasn't sure if they called it wide. I didn't look down Actually, to see what the line judge called. I think that uh, number, I uh, can't read the numbers. We are having trouble reading the numbers. I think. Uh, I think it was Wednesday Furman, the middle there. Yeah, I, I touched that ball and, and before it went out of bounds, Chris Bichelle. Oh, it was Diana Workman. And at first I did, I looked here for the touch, but they called it a service ace on the floor. So it was either one of the other, obviously gave IPFW a point. We'll take it any way we can get it. And we've got an error there on Tiffany Burns where she was in the net. And a quick timeout for Kentucky State Thoroughbreds this time as IPFW bounces out to a very quick lead of eight to one. And obviously that short break didn't do much to them. They're together and they're playing well. And, uh, well, and, I, and I think it goes back to what we mentioned before that IPFW is the better volleyball team here and they're just showing it right now. They just, uh, they're, they've taken command of this, of this match. Well, Kentucky State with a one to eight record overall uh, and IPFW with eight to six, it is definitely showing on the floor at this time. And IPFW has played some very tough matches and even though they've lost, they've lost to Gannon twice, which is one of the top 20 teams in the country. They've lost to Grand Valley, which is one of the top 20 teams in the country of their six losses. And if you play in matches like that, even if you lose, it just it, it uh, builds your confidence. It helps you play. It technically helps you play better. And and you can see that that experience, that playing experience, is, is making a difference in tonight's match. So. Mm -hmm. Shannon Smith was still serving for IPFW after that timeout. Huber cross court. With a left hand. Don't know if it was a poor set or she's got a sore arm. She was dug by Tiffany Burnsworth on that, but then they got it back over, and uh, we got a very excited crowd over here. I think it must be some relation to Tiffany. As Shannon Smith wasn't able to get to it. But maybe that's what they need, the some a little bit of excitement to get them going. The Kentucky State fans haven't had much to cheer about since that early four to zip lead in the first game. Pavato. Went for the first one, it came right back at her, went back one more time and said, this time it's mine, and IPFW earns a side out. And there's gonna be a substitution. Carol Lamar is gonna come in to serve for IPFW. Christy, IPFW is much, much stronger at the net. You have somebody like Amy Pavato and Jill Lyon and Shannon Smith who have a lot of upper body strength, just much, much stronger at the net this year than they've ever been in the past. The IPFW lost all their height last year, but the quick quickness and the jumping abil ability of Lions and, and uh, Pavato is, is obviously showing tonight. Well, there was a case where the, the pass wasn't very good, didn't give Jill Lyon much opportunity to set the ball any place other than the back set, and, it, and uh, Heather Teagarden couldn't get her over the net. And it was served by Burnsworth. Keeper on the outside, and there was no one back row. Earns her another kill. Matter of fact, uh, senior Julie Huber is closing in on 1,000 kills, and she entered tonight's match with a 950 lifetime, so uh, we've already had a few more added to that. She will soon see the 1,000, I'm sure, as long as she stays healthy and, and is not one added to the injured reserve. Free ball for IPFW. 
July in back set. Lions gonna go back again, this time to Berlin. Dug well by Kentucky State, and there was a nice kill by Danetta Reese. Well, we saw the backslide of Danielle Berlin that we thought we'd see more of. We haven't seen it a lot, but uh, IPFW has been pretty successful. But I'll tell you what, Kentucky State's impressing me, Christy, that they're keeping the ball off the floor. They're, they're not real good in execution once they've done that, but they are keeping the ball off the floor, and there's a key, key, uh, key situation. There were a couple attempts that IPFW had a chance to get it down, and Kentucky State kept the ball alive and ended up getting the side out. Well, that was a tough angle from our view, but uh, linesman Loey Ball called that one in. The official looked at him and took his call on that. Other linesman down at the other end is uh, Raul. I always get Raul Papaleo. Raul Papaleo. And they're both uh, from our men's volleyball team here at IPFW. There's a real good relationship between our men's and women's program, and that that uh, this is the kind of thing that really helps the program out when the uh, the men call the lines for the women, and, and the women will oftentimes call the lines for them in the men's matches. Serving, I believe, was Logan for the thoroughbreds. Back row. And a little bit too hard by Danetta Reese. Once again, I don't, she doesn't have a real good uh, eye on that back line tonight. That's been a couple that she's put over. Well, Reese is asking for a little bit higher set from Tiffany Burnsworth, but she still has to get that reach and get that top spin on that ball because she's hitting the ball hard enough. She just isn't getting it to come down in the court. Number six, Amy Reidenbach just came in in the game for IPFW. Jeline with the tip. And finds no one there. Tiffany Burnsworth met the wood, but couldn't get to the ball on time. Berlin serving for IPFW. And a lift. Christy, you mentioned that Amy Reidenbach came in. Coach Sheehan tells me that she is just a great athlete as a freshman, and she expects great things from this girl in the next four years. She's out of West Noble, I believe. Yeah, that's correct. I was just checking that myself. I wasn't sure where she had, had come to IPFW from, and West Noble, which is just a little bit north of Fort Wayne. And that's that's one thing that's great to mention about IPFW is is there we already mentioned how good the relationship is between the men's and women's volleyball program. Well, not only that, but they are well known for their volleyball program and and people who might go to other universities All in favor for right scholarships want to come here to play hands. because of the recognition our volleyball teams have gotten. And there was a kill by Reese. Great, great. There she got the extension and got the top spin on the ball. And I want to follow up on that point you just made. I. I go back to the first uh, first team that made the NCAA tournament was the women's volleyball program a number of years ago, and of the 12 players on the roster, 11 of them were from Allen County. So we've just been able to build the program with local talent. That's just a great thing to do. And there's a kill for Reidenbach, and that adds a little bit of enthusiasm to IPFW. A substitution comes in. Does something as well as that, makes a quick play. The, pe the, the team gets sparked by that, and that forces Kentucky State to call a number ti another timeout, and that is their second for game two. So once again, now the only way he can really stop the play is by a substitution as IPFW leads game two, 11 to one. And uh, this time they're not, they're really showing their experience, even though it is a young team over Kentucky State. There's the Don. Channel 6 invites businesses and organizations to consider underwriting the televi televising of IPFW sports events and other programs. For more information about how you can take advantage of this opportunity to provide a highly visible service to the community, call the Channel 6 office during business hours at 481-6582. That's 481-6582. And as we saw there, the Don doing what he does best. Oh, he's been a great addition to this program uh, as a mascot. And he just does a super job. Kids love him. The kids love him. Lions serving for IPFW. And that's going to be a long hit by Wednesday Furman. She tried to call a touch, but uh, both officials said no, that there wasn't one. So Lion will ser Lion, Joe Lyon will serve, and it's 12-1 IPFW. Lion gets the set. Tea Garden. 
but it was dug. Joe Lyon cross court to, to Smith. And that was called wide. Another point IPFW. There was some nice execution though by Kentucky State. We haven't seen that type of play in a long time since probably about those first four points in, in the first game. But you but you gotta finish the execution, Chris. You gotta get the ball down. And they're doing everything up to that point. They're not getting the ball in, down on the court. And they trail 14 to one here. And Joe Lyon's gonna serve for game point in game number two. And that's wide, so she left the door open for just a second to see if Kentucky State can do anything. And we, we're sorry for the delay on the service people for the thoroughbreds. Once again, they are hard to read their numbers. That was Teresa Hall. Well, they've got yellow numerals on white material, and it's just very difficult to read on the front of their jerseys. And we got a lift, IPFW, so there is a point for Kentucky State. 14-2, number 18, Hall will still serve. Fans trying to get their team aroused, yelling at them. Not a bad crowd here tonight for this match. No, it isn't a bad crowd. IPFW typically, uh, the, the community supports IPFW volleyball, and uh, it's not a bad crowd here for a Friday night, competing against high school football and other things going on in the community. And there was a wide hit by Tea Garden, so it's 14-3. They're over at still serving. IPFW needs a side out. And we have a viol net violation. And it was a line violation, I believe. By number 17, Danita Reese. That was a nice quick, uh, there's a quick move by someone that's been around playing Jill Lyon as she was being called for the, for a set to the center and uh, went for, a quick shot over the net, but Kentucky State was awake on that one and was able to get it back. Well, it appears to me, Christy, that Kentucky State has some good, good athletes, and they just need some experience playing volleyball. And that's going to be it. And T Garden kind of turned her hands up on that one. She uh, knew that was tight, but it went down, and it gives IPFW a chance to uh, wrap this game two up. And once again, Cheeks is going to bring in Carol Lamar. We've seen her quite a bit coming in to serve for IPFW. That's her role, and, and uh, come in at, at crucial points to play defense and serve tough, and uh, she came in and served well. And no touch, and that was out by number 11, Deidre Logan, and that wraps up game two, 15-3. So it doesn't end up much different. It was 15-4, 15-3. Although the 15-3 score was a, a lot different in the way that it transpired. IPFW went up 11-1. to and it gave, actually gave a couple of points to uh, Kentucky State. But that, that's the, right. But the key here is, again, for IPFW now, I assume that Coach Sheen will do a little bit of substituting, although she has done some of that. Uh, we haven't seen uh, Kathy Cook. I believe it's Kathy Cook. Kathy we, Culp. Kathy Culp, that's right. We've not seen um, uh, Lisa Hendricks. So we'll hope, hopefully uh, Coach will get a chance to put some of those kids into the lineup here after uh, winning the first two matches. So. And moving down the line, both on crutches. <laughs> Joy Thayer and April Bear there, and you can catch that on your screen. And unfortunately, one of those, like we said earlier, isn't coming back, and uh, what a disappointing uh, break for Joy Thayer. Well, I know she worked real, real hard this summer, and she's gonna be disappointed, so. We'll be right back for more volleyball action right after these brief messages. Communication is a fundamental right, basic to all human existence. But if communication breaks down, the results can be devastating. Contrary to popular belief, no one is safe from a communication disorder. Early detection is vital to an effective program of rehabilitation. Help is available for you and for those you love. For further information, contact the speech-language hearing professional in your area or call the Indiana Speech-Language Hearing Association. You're Helen Hayes. Oh, I knew that. The old garden, the new wave. To tell you about another down-to-earth benefit from space research. I can't believe these glasses for the deaf. A tiny microphone on the frame connects to a portable computer which converts spoken words into visual cues that appear right on the lens of the glasses. Huh, the eyes doing what the ears can't. Incredible. Space technology. This is what's in it for you. With illegal drugs and alcohol, 
users aren't the only losers. Our 18-year-old Susan lost her life, was killed. The driver of the other car was a student, 17 and drunk. He'll have to live with that forever, but he's alive. Teenagers, don't let anyone kid you. Drugs and alcohol can kill. Parents, don't kid yourselves. The danger is all around you. Talk to each other. Users aren't the only losers. And looking down on the floor, we uh, had a little bit of a few words said by uh, Coach Chian to her team, but it just looked like you're playing well, let's go, let's just keep it up. Uh, just do what you're doing, basically, and you're going to get through this all right. In Kentucky State, I don't know, I think the coach is almost about at that same point, just saying, let's go. Um, we're down two games. You have nothing to lose at this point, so you just might as well play all out. Let's see if we can execute the ball a little bit better and get it down on the floor and uh, get a few more points this time. Well, as we look down at the IPFW starting lineup, we do have two new faces in the lineup. Actually, uh, one of those, Amy Reidenbach, has already played, but not a bunch. And Lisa Hendricks, number 14, a graduate of Bishop Goinger High School here in Fort Wayne, is also in the lineup. So Coach Sheehan is having a little bit of an opportunity to play some kids that don't get to see a bunch of playing time. And that could be really important later on in the season, both in the conference and at the, at the GOVC tournament uh, coming up in, in uh, November. Right, having a 2 to nothing game lead does definitely give them the opportunity to put some players in. And, and playing time is the only way you're going to learn and playing with the other team members. You know, you can practice all you want, but being in a game situation oh, is totally yeah, different. So it really gives them a chance to uh, get out there and see what they can do and let the team gel a little bit with all the different players. Well, and it also gives some of the other kids a chance to play, uh, fit into the lineup a little bit differently. Later, we see Danielle Berlin uh, passing again, and I think that's going to be a real important uh, at some point in time. And it's a side out for IPFW, so they start off quick and get the ball back. And back to serve will be Shannon Smith. Smith, back to serve. A lot of new faces this year, a lot of new people for everyone to watch, and there's the service air. Well, Kristen, you and I are going to have to pick a dandy down of the game, so we, and this is the third game could be over with, so we're going to need to start looking and trying to decide uh, which player we're going to choose as the dandy down of the game. And that was a little weak, but we'll take it. Well, again, now that you've got some different kids in there, it's going to take a while, I think, to get the timing down, and that uh, appeared to be uh, just a missed time uh, set there. Amy but it worked out right. got to it. And once again, now it's the new face, so. And there's a, a long hit. Deidre Logan looking a little upset, and that's right now where Kentucky's just got to play hard and uh, get going. Make a mistake and just bounce back from it. It's easy to say sitting up here, it's always a little more difficult when you're down there on the floor. And Heather Teagarden earns a kill as there is no one there really to block that ball. Heather's a great all-around player. She just do a lot of things for this program. She comes from a very strong high school background at Snyder High School. She's been very successful, played for a state championship team, and just does a lot of things nice, nicely for uh, Coach Sheehan and the uh, volleyball. There was a little miscommunication by Shannon Smith and Amy Wright back on the back on the back line and that's a side out for the thoroughbreds but that's what we're talking about they need to get out there and, and find out what they need to do with the different individuals on the floor quick set by lion and we've got a lift side out ipfw heather teagarden serving for ipfw they lead two to zero in the third and there's a kill, number 17, Danita Reese. That's just a real tough serve by Heather Teagarden. Had a lot of top spin, a lot of side spin, and the ball was uh, very close to the out-of-bounds line, and, uh, and the uh, Kentucky State player just was indecisive. Right back to Reese, she went with the ball, and a cross-court set, but it was uh, blocked by Lyons. And... Jill's going to use that back slide that we've seen, and it's, I was going to say it's going to work, but I didn't want to get ahead of myself by Danielle Berlin. But it did work. <laughs> Arnie uh, Ball and I talked about that the other day during the telecast in the Ashland game, and, and he mentioned that it's very slow developing, but I think the advantage it gives for the women is it gives a, a lot bigger windup, and you can hit the ball a lot harder. 
So you may give the defense a little bit more time to react, but I think the, uh, the advantage you get by being able to hit the ball harder is overweighs that. Amy Reidenbach not able to get to that ball. Reese back to serve for the thoroughbreds. We'll see if IVFW can get it back, and July decides that she's gonna send it back over herself and uh, side out IPFW. No chance to even set that one up. She saw the opening, and that's, that shows a little bit of experience on her part. Lisa Hendricks serving for IPFW. And that's inside. And Logan will get a kill as uh, Shannon Smith couldn't quite, I don't think she was just really ready to get up there for the block. They were a little behind the ball. She didn't penetrate the net, Christy. She, she was there, she just didn't get the, her hands across and the ball fell on her side of the net. And Shannon Smith. And that's a point. We were a uh, few people calling there for a touch, but. I thought it was a touch, and Raul Papaleo thought it was a touch, but it appears that nobody else in the officiating ranks thought it was a touch. So. Well, now we have some booing from Kentucky State. They reversed their call, and that's unusual. You don't see that too often. Berlin serving for IPFW. Lisa Hendricks with a good dig, and Shannon Smith with a kill. Berlin, Berlin back to serve, and a 5 nothing lead here in game number three. IPFW playing really well. And that time the set was a little low, and I don't think they really knew who they were going to go to. Wednesday Furman was the only one on the outside. And uh, they're talking about a little bit, trying to get their play together and trying to figure out what they're doing. We have a substitution number three, Kathy Culp, and there was the other face that we haven't seen, comes in for Danielle Berlin. And comes in with a nice first serve. Back row to Reese, and that was a touch that time. As Kathy Culp, the new player in, tried to get out of the way, I think, after she realized it was going to be a long hit, but decided that uh, actually what? she had no choice. Right, that's exactly right. <laughs> it just hit her. I think that this substitution pattern for uh, Coach Sheehan is, is in a double advantage. One, it gives the players that haven't played a lot some playing time, but they also have a big match tomorrow night against uh, Bellarmine College and uh, she's able to rest some of the starters, and that's gonna be, I think, a big advantage going in. Bellerman's playing at Ashland tonight. We'll drive here either tonight or tomorrow and play. And that's gotta give uh, Coach Sheen and the Valley Downs a little bit of an advantage here because they're not having to play tonight. Shannon Smith with a little bit of a battle in that last play on the net, and there's gonna be a, a long hit. Point IPFW, and it's six, I'm sorry, seven to zero in game number three. Jill Lyons back to serve. And I'm not sure if Kentucky State really meant to do that, but it gives uh, Teagarden a chance, and that's why. Well, Heather tried to hit the angle from the middle, and that really have to cuts down your angle because it's not a very big distance, and she just hit it wide. Teresa Hall with the serve. And that's going to be in by number 14, Lisa Hendricks. Back row attack by Lisa Hendricks. Real surprise, I think. Lisa Hendricks, by the way, is the sister of Susie Smith, the assistant coach, whose maiden name was Susie Hendricks, who was at one time a great volleyball player here at IPFW. Well, I think uh, she has a sister following in the footsteps then. Oh, there's a little miscommunication on IPFW side, but nice save by Reidenbach. It's a free ball for the Thoroughbreds. And they weren't quite sure what they were going to do either. Kill by Amy Reidenbach in the middle. IPFW, you talked about a little miscommunication, but coach has got to be pleased that they're not letting the ball drop. They're, 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 they're all going after it, and then that's just got to be a good thing. Shannon Smith serving for IPFW. HO lead for IPFW. The Lady Dons looking for another point here, but we're going to have a lift call. 
And Kentucky State's gonna call a timeout as he doesn't have any points on the board this time. But I think he, nope. Now he's gonna change his strategy, he's Christy. He's gonna put a sub in instead of using his timeouts. He's still save his timeouts. I'm not sure, uh, not sure that's wise, but the timeouts really haven't made much of a difference for him in his match. So he's probably figuring that he's gonna try to break the momentum by a substitution. He brought Lori Riddle in before and uh, she really didn't make that much change. But that was a really nice serve, but a nice dig by uh, Shannon Smith for IPFW. Free ball for the Thoroughbreds. We'll see what they can do with it. They go backside to Deidre Logan. And IPFW just couldn't execute that as Lisa Hendricks couldn't get to the ball. Well, because, because uh, Jill Lyon had to dig, and that put Heather Teagarden in a setting position, which is unusual for her, although, as I said, she's a very versatile player and can do that. It just uh, set didn't quite work with uh, Lisa Hendricks. Wednesday Furman still serving. Two great serves by Furman. The first one was a great save by IPFW there. They couldn't get to it, so two great serves. That's right. Smith barely got under that last serve that she had, and then that one we didn't get to. Lines with the back slide, Amy Pavato. But the thoroughbreds are keeping it live. And so is IPFW. We'll see what ends up here. And uh, Danita Reese, although they were playing really well there, decided to take that one and thought she had an opening, but wasn't misjudged where the ball was, didn't get up over the net. Well, I think, again, just, and this is without much knowledge of the players, Christy, but looking at Danita Reese, I think she's a very, very good athlete. It just appears to me she doesn't have a whole bunch of training in volleyball, and it's just going to take some time if uh, indeed she's going to develop into a good volleyball player. There's going to be a point for IPFW as that's four hits. And that's a point for IPFW, nine to two. And what we were talking about earlier, not only is being able to get these other players in, uh, the resting period is, is a great advantage for IPFW when they turn around and play tomorrow afternoon. And there's an ace serve by Carol Lamar. And she's done a wonderful job coming in tonight. Well, again, we talked about it. That's her role. She's going to come in and serve, and she's going to play defense in the back row, and she's done a very nice job tonight doing that. 10-2 lead for IPFW. And there's Reese, and it's a little yeah. wide. She's a very powerful player. She's got a lot of strength in her legs and a lot of strength in her arms. And like you were talking about, she just needs to form each of those a little bit better and uh, she's gonna be tough to stop if she ever gets that done well she gets up well she just doesn't place herself well I noticed a couple times she didn't set herself up for a kill but she just went straight up and was able to hit the ball down so if she could get that technique down I think she could be a, a very very good volleyball player when she gets it together like that last play uh, Shannon Smith had a hard time she got her hands on the ball but uh, it was a uh, Nice spin off of it, way up almost into the balcony. We got it back. So it's 11-2. Thoroughbred serving here. Back row to Lamar. Thoroughbred's with a chance here. Back to Lamar one more time. This time, quick set to the middle. And Berlin gets a side out. Actually, Christy, I may be confused, but it appeared we had two middle, two different middle attackers there. I thought Heather Teagard hit the first one that Kentucky State dig, and Danielle Balloon hit the second one that uh, they weren't able to get up. And that one was into the net for Kentucky, and they tried to get back to it and couldn't, so it's an 11-2 lead. IPFW, game number three, I'm sorry, 12 to two, so three points away from wrapping this one up this evening. And with a service ace that gets things going. We're gonna have a rotation, a substitution here. Number 18, Teresa Hall is going to come in. I don't think that uh, Coach Sams has taken any time out in this game, but he's uh, obviously resigned himself to the fact that timeouts is not going to make the difference, but he's uh, trying to find a combination that maybe can click, maybe not tonight, but maybe tomorrow or next That's week right. or whenever. 
you got to find out what works if it isn't for tonight's game. And uh, there's going to be Jill. She's kind of slid under the net there. Almost short enough that I think if she would have uh, been had a little more momentum, she would have went all the way under. She knew that. She kind of had a nice little smile on her face. Well, she made a good attempt at the ball. It, was, it wasn't a very good pass. And, and it's going to be a free ball for the Thoroughbreds. See if they can do anything with this. And into the net. That was a nice move by Danielle Berlin. She uh, definitely showed herself the force against the front net. And uh, I don't think I'd want to stand down there and see any of those people on the other side. It was a nice serve by Hendricks. Oh, and great play. That's Danita Reese we talked about. She's a great athlete. She just had a couple really nice back row attacks. There she, she got herself set. She came into the ball and got a lot of top spin and uh, hit with a lot of power. I believe that was Furman. I'm sorry, it wasn't. It was Deidre Logan. Point for Kentucky State. 13 to 3. Once again, IPFW basically, I think, opening the door and giving them a chance at a few last minute points. Not, not purposely, but uh, this is what happened in game two before they wrapped it up. And there's a second guess thought by Teagarden. She did get it over. And that's why. Point IPFW. I'm sorry, side out for Fort Wayne. That was the last service by the Thoroughbreds. I think sometimes that happens when you sit up here, you kind of lose track which way you're going. We well, when IPFW is scoring as many points as they are, you expect them to get a point every time. Couple substitutions back into the lineup. Number six, riding back number three, Kathy Culp. And Culp's back to serve. And right back to Reese, they're gonna go. And a uh, nice little help with the net as it dribbled across and uh, paid off for a side out for Kentucky State. And I think they've uh, realized right now that's where their power is and they're just gonna send it back to her if they have any chance for points. It's probably gonna come out of, out of her hit. There's a, a case of not very much playing time together. Shannon Smith uh, working hard to return the ball, didn't make a great pass. Amy Reidenbach was able to get to it, but uh, in trying to get the ball across court for a, a nice set, she was able, not able to do a very good job, and Heather couldn't get to the ball. IPFW back to Berlin. I'm sorry, Teagarden. And it's long. I'm kind of enjoying these Kentucky people being down to my left because even though they're down two games and they're down 13 to four in the third, they wanted them to stay in the game. They and, haven't and stopped uh, rooting for their team. That's what college athletics is all about, Christy. Jill Lyons are gonna go to Reese. And once again, she finds the open spot on the floor. That's three or four in a row from the back row for uh, Danita Reese. Kentucky State earning a side out. Teresa Hall. It was a nice dig by Culp. Jill gets the ball. Culp and Teagarden just sends it back. Nice play going on between the two teams. Teagarden sees an opening. Oh, nice save by Jill Lyons. And Lisa Hendricks uh, tried to keep it going, but couldn't quite get to it. She saw a back row kill and couldn't resist. Actually, not a very smart play on Lisa's part. You need to, uh, on that third attempt, if you don't have a good shot, you just need to get the ball over and hope that the other team either doesn't handle it or gives you at least another opportunity to handle it. That's right, we've opened the door. It's 13-5. IPFW still leads, and uh, that was a tough break for Kentucky State as they finally got a little bit of momentum rolling their way. IPFW is going to take it away with the side out. And hopefully Shannon Smith can keep it rolling. Two points for the game. And uh, one of the officials is checking, I think, to uh, make sure we have the right people in. And we're going to have a timeout called by Kentucky State. 
And I think right now you can see the momentum that they have some their way, and uh, he just wants to get well, them. I, again, Christy, at this point in time, I don't think he expects the game to turn around, but I think he's right. just looking to get any kind of continuity he can to take with him tomorrow's match against Ashland or even in next week's game. So, Tune in tomorrow night at 8 p.m. to see the Lady Knights from Bellarmine College take on the IPFW Lady Volley Dons. On Saturday night, October 10th, the St. Joseph's Collie Lady Pumas arrive to try their luck against the Lady Volley Dons. Then, Sunday, October 11th, see the Lewis University Lady Flyers and IPFW. See all the action of NCAA women's volleyball right here on Cable College Access Channel 6. And Smith, back to serve for Fort Wayne. Smith is back to serve for Fort Wayne. Two points from wrapping up this match and third game. And Thoroughbreds keep it alive. And there's a long hit by Amy Reidenbach. Well, the pass was too tight to the net. Jill didn't have much chance, and the set was a little deep for Amy Reidenbach, and had to reach back and couldn't get the topspin on the ball, and the ball ended up being a flyer. Wednesday Furman serving for the Thoroughbreds, and I'm not sure what went on there. Jill tried to come over for the set. Well, I think the philosophy of any coach and volleyball team is that the second ball is the setter unless she absolutely can't get it, but they expect every attempt to be made. And then I think Jill went all the way to get that ball yeah. and just couldn't quite get to it and save it, and it went out. In that case, communication often takes place when you've got a regular set people, but when you've made some adjustments like we have in the lineup, it just becomes a little bit more difficult to do that. And we're going to send Berlin back in for Kathy Culp. Put a little bit of uh, at least more experience from playing time back on the front line. Amy Reidenbach back to serve. 13-6 IPFW. We have a lift point IPFW. Ryan back to serve for game three, and this would also be for the match tonight. And Kentucky State looked like they didn't know who wanted to take that. All and standing I've, and watching. Yeah, I've seen it happen so many times. Come down to that match point, and, and there's a, so much indecision because you know that it, it's so critical. And yet, Kentucky State comes through and staves off that final point. Deidre Logan finds the hole to tip that in, too. And uh, they're at least going to hold IPFW off from this win for another moment. 14 to 6, thoroughbred serving. And we got a net violation against Reese. Well, she just got a little anxious and, and uh, hit the set attempt on uh, of Jill Lyon, and that's illegal in the sport of volleyball. I Good guess we, serve. Guess we could have looked at our paper. Denita Reese is a senior for Kentucky State, so. So she can't have too much uh, more opportunity for experience. No. She uh, definitely just will have to work on it, and that's it for this game. 15-6. And that wraps it up overall. 15-4, 15-3, 15-6. IPFW wins it in three. And uh, Kentucky State just needs to work on it. They also are fairly young. They have quite a few freshmen and sophomores on their team. So they're just going to have to see what they can do. IPFW obviously playing well tonight. A chance to get a lot of different players in. And we'll have to see what they can do tomorrow. Right. Christy, I'm going to head down the floor and uh, interview our Dandy Don player of the game that you and I agreed on is tonight is Shannon Smith. So I'll go down to the floor and try to get an interview with her. Okay. Well, we'll send it back down to you in a second. And uh, we'll try to wrap up a little bit of, of what went on up here in this game. Uh, the the 3-0 victory is another victory for IPFW as they came off of a, a four-game victory just in their last set. We'll be right back for more volleyball action right after these brief messages. Lies beget lies. God, you sound like mother. Well, she happens to be right. Lying is a vicious circle and there's no way out except to tell the One out of every five people who try cocaine get hooked. But that's not your problem. <laughs> or is it?
is in need in your own hometown, please join your local chapter. Carol. Tom. Some people still don't realize how space technology benefits everyone. Well, you've played a detective. Why don't you give him a clue and I'll be your helper? Okay, partner. Look at this. Without warning, hurricanes can take a huge toll in lives and property. But with space satellites, we now have ample warnings. And thousands of lives have been saved. Hey, Carol, we're a great team. We're a great item. Space technology. This is what's in it for you. Mental illness. We fear it. We laugh at it. We scorn it. We think it's shameful. But these are misunderstandings. Misunderstandings that will fade away if we see mental illness for what it really is. A medical disease. A disease that can be treated if you just know where to turn. For an informative booklet, call the American Mental Health Fund. And welcome back. We're glad you uh, came back to hear the final interview here this evening as IPFW wraps this one up in three, 15-4, 15-3, 15-6. Joining us now down on the floor is Dan Gephardt, and with him is our dandy Don of the game, and that is Shannon Smith. I'm send it down to you, Dan. Well, I have with me Shannon Smith, the dandy Don player of the game. Shannon, uh, both Christy and I thought you did a great job coming off the bench. Not, not in this game, but coming off the bench the other night when Joy got hurt. And it looked like to us that you uh, actually s decided in your mind to step forward and take charge, particularly in the passing. Yes, um, I did. I, we worked a lot in practice on passing and um, on both sides of the net, so there's always four of us that are ready to come in and pass the ball. Well, it really, it really looked like you took charge. For a while there, it looked like you were a little bit hesitant, but we thought you just did a great job. Also looked like you had a lot of success on the left outside. Uh, were they leaving that open, or were you just feeling very good about that set and that hit? Um, I've always hit on the outside, so that's where I feel more comfortable. Well, we, we really thought you did a great job tonight and appreciate the thing you did, and congratulations on this award. Thank you. So we'll send it back up to Christy to wrap up tonight's game that the uh, Volley Dons won three to zip. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dan. We're really glad that uh, Shannon Smith played as well as she did. We'd like to take this time to thank the Channel 6 volunteer crew and the Learning Resource Center at IPFW for their contributions to the live production of our volleyball match this evening. The telecast of this IPFW sporting event is the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. An authorized copying, retransmission, or rebroadcast of this event without express written consent from IPFW is strictly prohibited. Tune in tomorrow night at 8 o'clock to see the Lady Knights from Bellarmine College take on the IPFW Lady Volley Dons. On Saturday night, October 10th, the St. Joseph's College Lady Pumas arrive to try their luck against the Lady Volley Dons. Then Sunday, October 11th, see the Lewis University Lady Flyers and IPFW. See all of the action of NCAA women's volleyball right here on College Cable Access Channel 6. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable casts of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we are able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to the College Cable Access Center at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805-1499. Please make your check out to the Indiana Purdue Foundation at Fort Wayne and designate it for College Cable As Access Athletics. And we sure hope you've enjoyed tonight's, tonight's match. You got to see IPFW take this one in three. And uh, we hope that you tune in for all of our matches and enjoy that all the athletics here at IPFW. So we're going to wrap this one up tonight. Once again, IPFW in three, 15-4, 15-3, 15-6.